Hello guys! In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform multiple correlation in Microsoft Excel. So once you open the correlation data set, go to the multiple correlation example tab to access the data for this demonstration. So in column A, we have the total population in thousands. Variable Y is the percent change in household income over the past several years and Z for the crime rate per thousand population. And our job is to identify the correlation between the variables X and Y, Y and Z, and X and Z. To do that, let's go to data analysis. By clicking the data tab here, then go to data analysis, then click correlation. After correlation, then press OK. Correlation, OK. Then for the input range, let's just have to highlight all the data from columns A to C. So click this field, highlight the data starting from row one to row, uh, row one, column A to row one, column C. Then in your keyboard, just press Control Shift arrow down to highlight all the cells all the way to row forty five. Then group them by columns then don't forget to check labels in the first row then let's select output range because we want to generate the result of this test within this worksheet and let's click on this field and let's select this starting cell to generate the output for the multiple correlations and press ok so there so let's summarize the values of r within these rows a row rather. So the correlation between X and Y. Let's zoom this in. So the correlation between the variables X and Y is given by this one negative 0 0.08 equals sign selected cell press enter. Correlation between X and Z. So we have equal sign. Click the cell press enter similarly. Y and Z equal sign, click that cell, press enter. The next thing we have to do is to identify whether this relationship is significant. And to do that, we just have to find the P value. In order for us to solve for the P, we need to have first the value of N, P value N, the degrees of freedom. So for N, we just have to count the number of pairs. And we have from row two to row 45. So there are 44 data sets or data pairs. Or you can use the count formula of Excel. So equal sign, count, open parentheses, so the value one, which is, we only have one value here. That is all the data from a certain column. Say column A, control shift, arrow down, then close parentheses. So we have 44 data pairs. So let's just type it here, 44 and 44. Next is for the T value. For the T value, you just have to follow this formula. T equals R multiplied to the square root of the radicand n minus two all over one minus R squared. So let's have equal sign. Then R squared, I'm sorry, R. Let's click this cell, multiply to the square root of the radicand. So let's have that grouping symbol first, just to be careful. So inside the radicand, we have n minus 2, so open parentheses, n minus 2, close parentheses, divided by open parentheses, 1 minus r squared, then close parentheses. There. Next, let's, let's just copy this formula to our cells here for the t value of the correlation between X and Z and Y and Z respectively. Then for a decrease of freedom, it's just 44 minus two. So let's just type it in 42, 42, 42. Then for the P value in this version of Excel, I'll be using the syntax T dot list dot two tail. So two T open parentheses. So we have x here. The x refers to the t value. And since we need the positive value for the t, so let's have it in formula. So type 
in ABS, open parentheses, the cell that you want to take the absolute value, click that, close parentheses, comma, the second input for the syntax is a degree of freedom, simply click 42, then close parentheses, enter. Then it's just copy this formula to our cells here. And these are the P values for the correlation between X and Y, correlation between X and Z, and correlation between Y and Z. Now for reporting purposes, we'll be using this table. So let's complete information for this table. So we have the C or the P value between the pair of the variables. So between X and Y, we have, let's just copy that, equal sign, select that cell. Between X and Z, the P value is 0 0.016, and between Y and Z, we have 0 0.006. So we might want to complete this table by providing the number of data per variable. So we have 44, 44, 44. To interpret this result, I already provided the interpretation here on this side. And for your reference, I just included this information here, but just write this in paragraph form, supporting this tabular form. Okay, so for the first pair, we have x, y, and 44, r is 0 0.08, and p is not less than 0 0.05. So therefore, we say that there is no significant relationship between these variables. By the way, we will be using this correlation coefficient descriptor by Cohen 1988 to describe the strength of the relationship. And for the first pair, it's just consistent that the strength of the relationship is trivial or very small or practical, practically zero. Okay. And since P is not less than 0 0.05, so the relationship is not really significant, even if there is. For the second pair, we have X and Z. The R is negative 0.36. So the negative sign here indicates the direction, negative relationship, 0.36 gives us the strength of the relationship, and that's moderate according to Cohen 1988. And since the P value is less than 0 0.05, then there is a significant negative moderate relationship between X and Z. So for the last part, we have a positive moderate relationship between Y and Z and that relationship is significant since the value of the P is less than 0 0.05 and R, according to Cohen 1988, gives us a positive relationship and moderate relationship. Okay, I guess that's it for the multiple correlations. Thank you for watching.